All right, everybody, what's going on? Welcome to another crossover edition of Locked on Avalanche and Locked on Blackhawks. And we are continuing our crossover episodes within the division. And uh, like I said, I am Chris Maselli from Locked on Avalanche. He is Jack Bushman from Locked on Blackhawks. Uh, How's it going today, my friend? Chris, it's going good, man. Monday Night Football's back for the first time in a while, so... No complaints on my end. It was quite the lazy Sunday that I had yesterday of laying around for about 10 consecutive hours eating garbage. And I loved every (laughs) second of it. I can completely relate to that, man. Like I'm not like a, I'm not like a healthy dude, but I'm like, nah, I I don't eat like crap all the time. But yesterday was one of those days where it was just like no limits day long. Oh, and I just, today has just been awful. I I just feel like garbage (laughs) all day. It was a rude awakening to put it nicely. Yeah. Yeah. It's always week one. And then the Super Bowl, where, where it's just like all bets are off, eat whatever you want. (laughs) I'm paying the price today. Definitely. So I'm in the same Uh, boat, man. Who's your, uh, if you're a Blackhawks fan, are you also a Bears fan or you follow somebody else for for football? Yes, I sadly am a Mm. Chicago Bears fan. It it was a tough Sunday night, Uh, probably about what most people I think expected though. I don't think most people expected the Bears to put up too good of a fight against the Rams, but uh, (laughs) we're just waiting on Justin Fields, man. That's what everybody's holding high right now is once he comes in, we're we're thinking he's going to be the guy. So that's what's getting me through the fall until we got hockey coming up not too too far after. I hear like like the Blackhawks, the 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 Bears are just a, a classic team that you always got to root for. So, absolutely uh, good defense, play in the cold. Yeah. Right, just right. Can never classic have a good football. quarterback, and that's what we're hoping for. We got finally <laughs> around the corner, man. Around the corner. So, all right. Well, uh, let's get into some Avalanche and Blackhawk talk. And uh, both of us have done crossovers with other hosts within the division. So you've listened to each each of our shows. You know how it kind of works. Uh, we'll talk about we're going to talk about the Blackhawks here first. We'll talk about the Avalanche in the second segment and then kind of just a all encompassing how they're going to do against each other, against the division, wherever third segment leads us is is where we will go. So let's dive in and talk some Blackhawks. And um, I, I thought it was an interesting offseason for them. First, the first thing I want to bring up is the big trade that everybody was talking about this time last year between the Avalanche and the Blackhawks which sent Saad to Colorado, sent Sidorov to Chicago. Neither of those guys are with their, their team now. <laughs> Is that surprising? I, I mean, I thought at least one of those guys or both of them would kind of hang around for a little bit longer. Yeah, I mean, Saad only having one year left being a UFA, I think it was probably more likely that he was going to be a one and done with Colorado, whereas Zadorov. The hopes when the Blackhawks first brought him in is that he was going to be a guy who could kind of solidify the defense back there a bit and be a top four guy for the future. And that wound up being just a one year turn, one year deal now as he's uh, up with the Calgary Flames. And it was just, it was a tough year for Big Z because all the things that he like does do well in his game, the physicality and he's good along the boards and in front of the net, he did those things well in Chicago. But what grasped everybody's attention was just how bad he was with the puck on his stick. And also coming into a new system, uh, a system that Jeremy Colleton has run for a couple of years now that uh, most people watching the Blackhawks kind of have some issues with. It just hasn't shown a lot of success, especially in the defensive zone since he's taken over for Joel Quenville. Um, but Zadorov, w- whether or not that was part of the issue, he had a bunch of lapses where he was out of position throughout the course of the season as well. So those turnover problems and the mental errors really is what wound up being uh, only a one-year stint for him. And, and as unfortunate as it was to only get that out of Brandon Saad, you know, it, it's, mm. it's really tough because at the time I was thinking we could at least get a second round pick out of Saad and, um, Bowman came out to the public and said that he would have rather gone with a, a more stable player at this point of their career rather than a prospect. They're kind of taking a gamble on and not sure what they're going to become, which, yeah, I get that. But looking at how we went about it now, you know, it, it definitely has to hurt. Yeah. Well, Zadorov <clears throat> many times was a healthy scratch for the Avalanche. They gave him so many different opportunities. Just He just didn't fit the mold after a little while, and they, they obviously decided to move him. But uh, And when Saad came over, I mean, he he hadn't even laced up skates yet, and he was like, "I I want to spend a long time here." So I think people were thinking like, "Ah, maybe he'll hang around," even though he only, he's only on his last year. Uh, I think they were good on term, but maybe not so much on the dollar amount. So he went elsewhere. I mean, you can't fault him for that. So no. 
How'd you um, how'd you think he performed though in his one year there? Great. He was great. I, I think he did exactly he exactly what they wanted him to do: shore up the second line. Uh, once things went south in the playoffs, uh, went south for everybody except him. He was consistent in the playoffs. So uh, I, I'm sad, no pun intended, <laughs> that he's he's not back. Um, he, he was he was somebody I was hoping they, they could re. re uh, get to return and it seemed like he wanted to stay but maybe he wanted a little bit extra money i don't know so that's, yeah that's, that's how it goes at. on the market sometimes yep um so for for chicago like last year kind of going into it it was i don't want to say a, a rebuild but they were kind of billing it that way before last year and um then they had some injuries like to, to their big who was uh who was their big injury last Jonathan, year? That, well, Jonathan Taves was out the whole year. Taves, Taves, yes, he was out the whole year. So, did they go into last year with like, look, it's it's a truncated season. It's fifty six games. Let's just you know mix and match anything we can do. Let's just figure it out this year. We're not expected to do a heck of a lot, but why don't we just put our young guys in as much as possible? Let them learn now. Like that's the perfect opportunity when it's just an odd year to do that. Did they go that route for most of the year or was it business as usual for the Blackhawks? No, that, that's kind of a fair way to put it, honestly. They really were all about just letting the young guys play and seeing what they have at this point uh, in their young careers, you know, and with how the roster was shaping up, Kirby Doc broke his wrist at the World Juniors, of course. Yes, right. Jonathan Taze was out indefinitely. Corey Crawford had just retired and we had a bunch of question marks in that. Um, so it did seem like the perfect time to get all those young guys some opportunities and, and uh, see where we can go from there in a sense, I guess. Uh, and that only wound up being for one year, what, whether or not, you know, they saw enough out of those young guys to feel they could be aggressive again or whether or not um, that they, you know, decided that they didn't want to waste these last couple of years of Taze and Kane. I'm not really sure. Um, but it's definitely a new mindset now. But as for last season, it, it was certainly just let the young guys play, get them experience. Uh, and I think I, I don't mind that mindset at all with the team at the stage where they were, you know, because let's face it, most people knew that the Blackhawks were not going to be a, a postseason team last season, despite, you know, having a tremendous first half because Kevin Lankinen was standing on his head. Nobody thought that was going to be a playoff team. So Bow per se, you know, not low enough to get a lottery, but not really competing for the playoffs. I think why why not? Even if it's even if it's going to be in a losing effort, let your young young guys learn how to be pros at an early age. That's going to be benefit them later on down the road. And yeah. even if they struggle, you know, sometimes you got to go through those struggles in order to be good. You know, not not everything's going to be easy along the road. So uh, it, it was only a one year rebuild as we look at it now. Obviously, based on the moves that they have made, but I thought at the time that was kind of the, the perfect move that they needed to do. And Honestly, it was a long time overdue because a couple seasons prior to that, the Blackhawks have been in the same situation and decided to go other routes. And you mentioned, uh, I mean, you mentioned Doc, but what about, you know, they have a good uh, youth movement, right? Like, what are some guys that you are looking forward to that um, could be playing this year or in the very, very near future? Yeah, there's a bunch of them, honestly, and a lot on defense, too. Uh, two, two that stand out, two high-round picks in previous draft classes by the Blackhawks. One, Ian Mitchell, who got his first taste of the NHL last season. He actually played his college hockey at Denver with the Pioneers. Nice. He was the former captain there. Um, he kind of stepped on the scene a little bit last year, struggled a fair amount, but being so young, 22 years old, fresh out of college, that wasn't much of a surprise. So it's going to be interesting to see whether or not he's going to be at Rockford, now that things are back to normal, 82-game schedule, if they're going to let him play a little bit down there to kind of uh, tone, tune up his game a little bit, um, that's going to be interesting. But I still think he's probably the best defensive prospect that the Blackhawks have in their system. So whether or not it be next year or the year after, he's going to be a big part of things going forward, I do believe. And another guy on the back end um, that the Blackhawks – got a little bit of NHL experience towards the end of last season is Wyatt Kalanuck, someone not a lot of people probably who don't follow the Blackhawks know a lot about. He was a former seventh round pick of the Philadelphia Flyers a few years back, didn't end up signing with them, signed on with the Hawks last summer because they guaranteed he'd get some NHL ice time at some point, and he got just that and really made the most of it. 
Uh, aside from Mitchell, I think Kalanuk might have the highest ceiling of any of the Blackhawks prospects. And unlike Mitchell, he's a little bit older. Kalanuk's already 24 years old. So I think he's probably going to be a guy who's already going to be in the NHL lineup for the Blackhawks opening night. So he's those two guys on defense are someone to keep an eye on. As for the forwards real quick, um, Brandon Hagel's one guy who, who stepped on the scene in a big way for the Blackhawks, kind of a jack of all trades guy last season. Swiss, Swiss Army knife can do it all, be on the fourth line, be on the first line. He's someone to keep an eye on. And Philip Kershev's another guy. Um, he stepped on to the scene as well last season. Had a couple of tremendous goals, a really beautiful one against the Detroit Red Wings. Struggled a little bit towards the second half of the season, but uh, now that he's got a full year under his belt, the Blackhawks are hoping he's probably going to make a difference on the third line for them. So there, there's a ton of guys to keep an eye on, though, yeah. Chris. I mean, and that's really what the Blackhawks have, have been doing the last couple seasons has been trying to build up those youngsters who can be the next core pieces of a team that's, you know, perennial playoff contenders like we were from 2009 right. to 2015. So. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun to keep an eye on for sure, though. And finally, I mean, how can we not discuss the two big acquisitions from them with Seth Jones um, and Mark andre Fleury? Uh, a shock for both of them? Just what? I mean, maybe the Fleury one was a little bit of a shock. Seth Jones, I heard the Blackhawks were involved in that. So uh, maybe not a shock that they got him, but uh, was the contract a surprise? Is, uh, you know, the dollar amount? Um, just give me, give me the, the thoughts on the, the fan base and acquiring those two big name guys. Yeah. I think everyone's excited for the most part about both those acquisitions. Uh, first starting with Seth Jones, there were talks about that for months that the Blackhawks were going to be in the mix to try and get him. And it made sense for a lot of reasons. It's no secret that the Blackhawks were pretty terrible on defense the last <laughs> few years. And a lot of that was just because, of Duncan Keith was still our guy logging the most minutes and being 36, 37, you know, that that wasn't really the best situation for him. And he never really had sturdy partners around with him. Connor Murphy's a good number two, but the depth defensively for the Blackhawks hasn't been the best throughout the years. And they never really had one, uh, had anyone since Keith kind of <clears throat> lost his way, I guess, you, if you will, after all those just tremendous years on the back end for the Blackhawks. So we really just needed a new number one defenseman to come in and stabilize things back there. And Seth Jones, he was the guy the Blackhawks were eyeing for months. Maybe the contract was a little bit too much of an overpay, but it, it was clear that this team really needed that. That was their mm -hmm. biggest need for a while now. So, um, And to pay a, a big-name defenseman like that on the open market, it's going to cost a lot of money. So $9.5 yeah. yeah, it's a lot, but you got to do what you got to do in order to get premier players in this league. And there's not a lot of guys around that have the capabilities that Seth Jones does. So I'm really excited for him to come in and be this new number one defenseman for the Blackhawks. And that's really how the city of Chicago is feeling right now. They're, they're really hoping he can take over and be a game changer back there because we've been needing one for some time. Mm -hmm. And as for Marc-Andre Fleury, that one was a complete and total surprise. I know there were some links between the two teams a, a couple weeks prior to the deal actually getting done, but uh, with the Blackhawks just getting Jones a couple days prior and taking on that huge contract going forward, plus – uh, having Kevin Lankinen, who, yeah, he's still young, but even in a number one role as a rookie, he looked pretty comfortable throughout the course of the season. There were hiccups, but uh, he definitely showed us some good potential. So there were just financially and kind of shape-wise to the roster. I didn't see how that was going to work, even though there, there were some links there. But then all of a sudden, you know, uh, things came out and the Blackhawks, I mean, only gave up a, a prospect that Vegas were, didn't even want. I don't know if you heard about the terms of that deal, but did you hear about that by chance? Uh, I, I, I remember they retained a lot of the salary, right? No, no. Did, so, did, well, the Blackhawks took on the whole contract. Oh, they did. Changed, okay. They, they took on the whole contract. It only has one year left on it, but they took on the whole deal and they gave up only one prospect in return who was, it was Michael Hackerine. And I believe he was a fourth round pick of ours a couple of years back and Vegas didn't take him. Like he was, he's still going to play in our system. How's that? Right. Work? It, I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we're still, we're still having him. Okay. It's like, because I think it's because of the, the roster limit or the 50 amount of, or the amount of cat contracts you can have active at one time. I'm not sure exactly how it works, right. but Basically, it was it was a free. Here's Mark Andre Fleury. You just got to pay him for the Blackhawks, okay. and okay. for one year. I mean, why not take a chance on that? The gamble really was that if Mark Andre Fleury was even going to play the season, and after a couple of conversations with his agent and his family, 
Um, he wasn't sure if he wanted to move his family out of Vegas after moving from Pittsburgh a couple of years back. He was really comfortable in Vegas, but ultimately they came to the decision that he will suit up for the Blackhawks this year. So wow. um, yeah. both of the, both of those additions are going to be huge for this team and should make them much more competitive than we've seen in quite a while. Yeah, well, it's nice to see like the Blackhawks when when they when they threw that letter out there saying like, yeah, we're in a rebuild that it doesn't seem that it lasted that long. You didn't no. want that. So that that's definitely a plus because it's the league is better when you have a team like the Blackhawks that are involved in it. So, um, hey, I'm definitely excited, yeah. man. Yeah, and it's definitely more fun when you have a, a legit contender like the Colorado Avalanche as your team, I'm sure. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it makes it fun. Yeah, definitely. So well, let's talk yeah. about the, the expectations for this upcoming season. Uh, or I guess well, actually, what yeah, are you going to say? I wanted, I wanted to get to a couple of our ads first. And do, oh, do, uh, and, I and, forgot and get, we were going to get those in. Yes, yeah, so we got to get to uh, our bet online because, like we're saying, football's back. And uh, I, I, you, you throw some scratch down on these games every once in a while? or, or <laughs> uh, Guilty, you, guilty. You, you, you nodded like uh, I do, but uh, let's not talk about it. <laughs> It's, it's been a good week one. It's been a good week okay, one. Good. I wish it was like this all the time. Okay, good, good. Uh, so, yeah, football is back and get in on the action at betonline.ag. It's your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. And with new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, betonline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up. And receive your 100% welcome bonus. That is double your initial deposit just for signing up. And don't forget to use the promo code NFL100. From football, basketball, boxing, obviously hockey, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. It's bet online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. BetOnline.ag, your online sportsbook experts. Also, Direct TV Stream. And we want to tell you about a simple way to get all of the entertainment that you love without the hassle. It's Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on demand favorites together like never before, which means you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. And the best part is that there's no annual contract. So stop waiting and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. And you can learn more at directtv.com. Once again, that website is directtv.com. All right. So uh, avalanche stuff. I'm sure some Blackhawk fans want to know uh, who stands in the way. And cool. I am here to uh, assist in any way that I can, sir. So shoot. Yeah, the, the, the big dogs up top. Uh, so for Colorado, I mean, Looking at things for the most part, it, it seems like it's a pretty similar roster, uh, but it, I feel like it, it could have been different without mm. Gabriel Landeskog coming back. Mm. So what were the the scares about uh, Landeskog being a, a UFA, and how big is it that he's coming back to Colorado this season? It was very real, um, and and I, I was not jumping that ship yet. I, I, I thought it was heading towards uh, – well, I'll back up even more – I thought they were going to get him signed sometime last year. And Joe Sackick has had a track record of signing kind of like his, his bigger name guys, <coughs> excuse me, to, to a deal that takes over the following year. He did it with Nathan McKinnon on his current contract. He did it with Sam Girard last year, which that contract is, is kicking in this year. And I just thought it was going to happen with your captain, the guy that, you know, has been around for, seems forever now. Um, and it, for whatever reason, didn't happen. And the longer it went, I thought he was definitely going to test the market and see what was going to be out there. And I always thought in the end, he would circle back to the avalanche and say, yeah, you know, the, where I am is not that there, there is a team out there that's giving me more, uh, but it's not so much more where I need to leave my home. He has two kids now where he's raising his family. And these, you hear this a lot, but these are a close knit bunch of guys. So I always thought he would uh, come back, uh, but nobody was expecting that deal to get signed when it got signed because it seemed like it was just nothing was progressing. Um, I don't think the dollar amount was there. I don't think the term was there. And I think both sides had to sacrifice a little bit. And I think the avalanche had to give him that eight year term 
And I think he had to come down a little bit on the price because if he, if he's, you know, uh, if he sees this deal through to the end, he's going to be 38 years old at the end of it. And I don't think right. they wanted to be paying him nine, ten million dollars when he's a 38 year old center, you know, who plays in front of the net and gets beat up a lot. So right. he, they, both sides needed to kind of avalanche needed to go up on term. He needed to come down on price. And in the end it worked out. So, yeah, I mean, everybody wanted him back. That's for sure. That's no secret. <laughs> yeah, definitely a big part <laughs> of the team's success in the last couple of years. Uh, but going forward with this avalanche team, I mean, mo- most of the core is going to be sticking around and most of them are still fairly young. So a- at this point, is it fair to call the avalanche, the situation they're in is, is it Stanley cup or bust at this point with, with how they've fallen short in the playoffs the past couple of years, even though it seems like they've, they've got everyone there that, that they need to in order to get the job done. Yeah. That was the, the thinking last year, even, even going into that weird year where, you know, you're only playing within the division until the playoffs come around 56 games. It didn't matter for the avalanche. Like last year, was when you know okay like uh, enough you know pussyfooting around like this this is this is we're we're the team to beat and going into last year they were you know a favorite for even at bet online they were the favorite um and they got caught in the playoffs again in the second round again so now you have that on your back you know you've been uh outed in the second round of playoffs for the last three years so now people are like yeah you're a really good team um, but you got to put it together now in the playoffs. So it is there, there is no, I mean, <clears throat> and this is the toughest sport to, to, to win it, even when you're a favorite, you know what I mean? I agree. So, um, is it, you know, when you say Stanley cup or bust, it's like, well, yeah, but is, is getting to the Stanley cup. And, and if you just say you lose, is that a complete failure? No, obviously if you make the final of whatever sport, you're good enough to make the final go win the thing. Um, that's easier said than done. So I don't think, you know, if they can, if they can at least get there, this will be the first time that they've, they've gotten there with this group of guys. I think you would have to come away with that saying like, it's some sort of victory, not the almighty victory, which you want clearly. Uh, but it, if that happens, if, if they make the Stanley cup and lose it, then you have nothing else left to achieve but win the damn thing. So we'll see. They've been going up these steps little by little. And yeah, the next step is to make the Stanley Cup final and then see what happens when you can get there. Hopefully win the thing, obviously. Right. Yeah, that that makes complete sense. And yeah, that would be definitely a huge step for that core core group of guys that they've had for Mm -hmm. some time now. Um, But the new guy who's going to be backstopping them in that, they got Darcy Kemper all of a sudden. How big is that addition for the Avalanche this season? And um, what what do you think about the chances that he he signs on long term? He's still only got one year left on his deal. Um, I mean, obviously we have to see how the season plays out. But is there hope that if Darcy Kemper plays plays well, you know, and things go well, that he could be the guy going forward? Because that seems like the biggest question that's been surrounding the Avs for a couple of years now. Yeah, and they seemed like they had their goalie situation figured out with Grubauer. Um, and he turned tail and, and left. And that's the odd thing. Like a lot of people were thinking Landis Cog was on the way out and Grubauer was staying and the complete opposite happened. Um, right. It's, you know, for Avalanche fans, like, the, the, of course, they, you want to keep as much as your team intact. Um, and for, for Grubauer, it was he last year. He had a great season. No fans are butts about it. Uh, you know, Vesna trophy finalist. But I think Avalanche fans are feeling like, uh, not that they're not going to go as far as say like Kemper is an upgrade, but I think it's maybe more of a, a lateral move in, in terms of goal, because what does Kemper have that he didn't have in Arizona that Grubauer <laughs> had, he's got a great defense in front of him, you know? So I think p- putting him, if he just can, can do his job, not feel the need to, to win game and stand on his head. Sure. There's going to be games where he has to do that. And, you know, your defense is having an off night, but putting him in goal in front of a, a phenomenal defense, um, I think Avalanche fans are like, OK, Th- there was some some nervousness, no doubt, when when Grubauer signed with Seattle, because it's like, what are we going to do? Um, mm-hmm. And they had to go, they had to make a move. They were not going to just put a, a so-so goalie in there 
and just hope that the offense was just their, their great offense is just going to win them everything. They weren't going to do that. They had to give up a first round pick to get them. Uh, but like we were just saying, if if you happen to make it to the Stanley Cup final or even win it, uh, that's a 31st or 32nd pick. I think the Avalanche can live with that. And then signing him long term. It, everything right now revolves around Nathan McKinnon because he has this year and next year left on that steal of a deal. Um, and then and then you're paying him. So uh, e- even this offseason, like everything is revolving around that. They always have their eyes on making sure they have enough to give McKinnon a max contract. So uh, that's why they lost Grubauer. That's why they lost Saad is because uh, Joe Sackick has, he has all of this planned out and he has a number and he will not go beyond it. And if you can't, if you don't want to come to terms with that, he will find somebody else to replace you because he is not going to be outbid for Nathan McKinnon. So we will see the, the, it, it'll be an interesting, very interesting off season next off season for the avalanche because the off season after that is when they have to go after McKinnon, but they still have to sign players. This you know, every year you got to sign players. Of course. Kemp, Kemper's going to be one of those guys. If he plays well, yeah, you're going to have to to pay him, but it, it's going to be, interesting. Room? it's exactly, yeah. it's going to be really interesting to watch. It's always tough to make those financial decisions when you're sitting at the top and one of the top teams in the league, because it seems like every dollar matters at that point, you know, you yeah. got to spend every dollar in the right way. So uh, yeah, that will definitely be something uh, to keep an eye on for sure going forward for the Colorado Avalanche and their future. Uh, yeah. But one last question I kind of had just before, um, I guess we can kind of move things on to the central and some other yeah. thoughts or whatnot. Uh, but just overall, are you happy with what the Colorado Avalanche did this off season? And do you think ultimately they put themselves in the best position possible to go out there and get the job done and get over that hurdle to win the Stanley cup? Well, I've said many times that um, now seeing this year's roster, what we're going into this season with um, last year, I wish we had that back. They, they had a solid, solid roster uh, primed to make a really good run and it, and it didn't happen. They're, I don't want to say they're not as deep as last year, but it is a question mark. That is the biggest question mark. And on the bottom six, um, they let guys um, go, you know, well, they lost Donskoy, who's a, who was a great player for them um, on, on the power play. He was great on the power play. They lost him in the Seattle draft and uh, Pierre Edward Belmar, who was a, a bottom six guy, but uh, what, and great in the locker room, phenomenal in the locker, locker room. And they lost him. And that was a little bit of a head scratcher because he would have been minimal. He would have, I think he went to Tampa Bay for like a million a year, which is what he was getting in Colorado. I think they let him go because he's turning 36 and the avalanche like to stay young. So I think that's the reason why they got rid of him. So, um, and then the guys that they brought in, we'll see. They, they took some gambles on guys who, were high draft picks like Ryan Murray from the devils was a second overall pick. Um, maybe I think they're trying to like catch lightning in a bottle saying like, maybe he just needs a change of, a change of scenery and play on a Stanley cup contender. Um, and that's a gamble. That is a gamble. So we'll see the depth department, um, how, how it plays out. They have a lot of new faces, which a lot of times like, you know, you, you need some time to gel and, and, you know, if the Avalanche get off to a, a rough start, being one of the favorites, people are going to be like, "What's going on?" Uh, but which won't be fair. I mean, things things should work out. Uh, but overall, um, you know, I wish you could have signed Saad uh, Grubauer because of what you got in Kemper. I'm okay with. Uh, it, it wasn't a great off season, but it wasn't awful too. If we're grading, I would say a solid C in the moves that they made for the Avalanche. So. It'll be interesting, definitely for sure. So, um, all right, let's get to Built Bar. And then, like you said, we'll talk about the Central. So, uh, Built Bar, you know Built Bar, you love Built Bar. It's the greatest tasting protein bar on the market. And did you know that Built Bar has so many delicious flavors that there is something for everyone? You got a favorite? You, you got a oh, favorite? Bar, for sure. It's, uh, oh my God, lemon almond cheesecake. Yeah. Was oh, absolutely, that is a good one. Absolutely fire. That, that is a Put limited me on the spot. edition. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> you pulled it out, though, man. I'm proud of you. Uh, but they have 
so many flavors and like the one that he just mentioned which is a limited edition one but you can choose from flavors like coconut and raspberry and mint brownie and double chocolate and if you haven't tried them you can get a mixed box where you can get two of each of nine flavors and not only are built bar flavors the best tasting but they are healthy they have 17 to 18 grams of protein calories range from 130 to 180 only only excuse me only four or five grams of sugar only four or five grams of net carbs Amazing flavors, all tasty and all healthy. So go to BuiltBar.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off of your order. Once again, that promo code is LOCKED15 for 15 off at BuiltBar.com. All right, so the Central. A um, couple of years ago, this was this was the hands-down best division in hockey. Uh, where do you think it stands right now overall? I still think it could be that this season, just, just looking at it up and down. Uh, I think it could be the deepest division once again. Obviously, I believe the Colorado Avalanche are probably the top dog, as I mentioned earlier. St. Louis Blues still have a lot of pieces to be a good team, I believe. Winnipeg just made a little bit of a surprising postseason run. The Dallas Stars are still lingering, of course. Minnesota was a, a surprise last season, made the playoffs. That kind of depends on what's going to happen with Kirill Kaprizov, of course. Uh, and then there's still the Nashville Predators, who they surprised everyone last year by making the mm-hmm. playoffs and being that four seed in uh, the Central. So it's I think it's it's pretty top to bottom, pretty tough. Aside from the Coyotes, which made for a, a funny <laughs> conversation I had with Robin Liano yeah. <laughs> of Blackdown Coyotes the other day. Um, but, but what are your thoughts on the division overall? Because uh, for the Blackhawks, I mean, we have these hopes of being a, a playoff team, and we hope to contend for sure. Um, but I think that could be easier said than done with how the deep this division might be. Yeah, I think it, it's different. It's a different division in terms of like, like I said, a couple of years ago when it was, you know, everybody's like, this is the the best division in hockey. You you went in knowing that you went in For knowing sure. like all these teams are great going in there. Yeah, you that's the thing. Like you could have really good. You don't know what you're getting out of Nashville. Uh, you don't know what you're getting out of Dallas. Uh, Chicago's on the rise. Can they continue that? You know what I mean? Like nothing is, is, is guaranteed in that division. So can it be, uh, definitely. But, but I think the questions about if it is, uh, kind of linger over the division, which is, which hasn't been that way in a while. And you're right. Like with the exception of Arizona, um, anybody can, can make that run. And, and, and I, did you do a crossover with Seth yet from uh, Minnesota? Or, I haven't done one for okay. a season preview, but I've done a couple with him in the past. Okay. Yeah. And I, I did last week, uh, him and I did when I asked him that and he was like, you know what? Like, we don't know because they benefited from being in that division that the avalanche were in, which was kind of a weak division. So right. how, how will they do regular 82 game season? You're playing everybody across the league. So, you know, you have some Minnesota fans who maybe are like on, on a high horse, because they did what they did last year. You got to forget about that because this is a normal season. So I think it's it it's going to be a, a tough division uh, within itself. It, it always is. And when Avalanche, and I said this to, to Seth, when the Avalanche play Minnesota, it's, there, it's always a, a boxing match. Same thing with when they play the Blackhawks, always a boxing. So within the division, they're going to beat themselves up. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I really have my eyes on, and I'm not just saying this because you're on the show right now and we're doing a crossover, but I am really interested to see what Chicago can do this year. I, I think they can surprise some people. Yeah, I definitely think they have the capability to do so, especially if we get Jonathan Taze back, captain in that locker room and uh, sturdying up the, that top line and, at center. Uh, we made the moves yeah. to go and do that. Mark andre Fleury was huge. Even if new guys like... Seth Jones and Jake McCabe was another guy we didn't talk about, but he's someone I believe is also going to be a huge addition back there on defense for the Blackhawks. You talked a little bit earlier about uh, this gel period or this period it takes before you kind of gel and mesh with your teammates and are uh, clicking on full, rolling on full cylinders, if you will. Even if that does happen with Seth Jones and Jake McCabe for the Blackhawks, now we don't have a second year professional goaltender in there we have Mark andre Fleury the guy who yeah. just won the Vesna last year so it, it should be a team that is going to hopefully compete but definitely be more exciting than we've seen in the past and I do believe they have the capability to be right there in the mix 
Uh, I don't think they're going to be at the top, but I definitely expect them to be right there in the hunt for the majority of the campaign if, if things go well and they're able to remain healthy. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I agree. I think you're seeing some changing of the guard here when it comes to like, you know, you have teams like Chicago and Minnesota should be kind of maybe hopefully on the rise. And then, you know, kind of like mainstays like St. Louis uh, and even Nashville kind of like they might be coming back down to earth a little bit, maybe with St. Louis. St. Louis is such, I can't make heads or tails. I know. I can't put my finger on them. Yeah. So that's, but you know, that's the beauty of this. Like we don't know. I I love that. I love that. It's just kind of like a blank slate. Um, If you want to say, you know, the, you know what you're getting out of Arizona. If you want to say like, yeah, the avalanche should be kind of like the class of the division. But that is by no stretch of the imagination mean it's going to be a walk in the park for them. Uh, they're they're going to get beat up. Yeah. No, it's going to and, be fun. And they're playing 82 games for the first time in a while. So yeah. who knows how things are going to play out. And as you said, yeah. that's the beauty of the sport, Chris. Love it. Love it, man. So, uh, yeah, every time we do one of these shows, we're one day closer to opening puck drop. I, I cannot wait, man. Like this is – uh, the falls, and, falls the best. Oh, I can't, yeah. And like you said, just because we're finally getting an 82 game season that just amps up the excitement. So uh, I know I'm so awesome. excited to be like, especially, I mean, it was fun doing the shows last year. Don't get me wrong, all the crossovers and stuff, but I'm so excited to do more crossovers with other teams around the yeah. network and everything. And I know uh, get, get a look at teams I haven't seen in what seems like forever. So <laughs> yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited exactly. for things to go back to normal. Fingers crossed all goes well, but um, awesome. yeah, it should be a fun 2021, 2022 regular season back in the central division. Awesome. So, all right, before we wrap it up, why don't you throw out, I mean, if you're following, if you're watching it on the uh, YouTube, you can see Jack's uh, Twitter handle there, but why don't you throw out the show's Twitter page where people can follow you. Yeah, for sure. You can check out the Locked On Blackhawks podcast wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever we they got it. Uh, as for the Twitter account, you can follow me at Jack Bushman too, as it says below. The Locked On Blackhawks Twitter account is at capital L, capital O underscore Blackhawks. Chris, it was a lot of fun as always, and uh, I'm looking forward to many more of these uh, throughout the course of the campaign. Sounds like a plan, my man. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and we will see everybody later in the week.